Here we are sitting in Grand Finals. It is Rubik and Clubber Dan. Rubik making a hell of a climb, uh, beating Jinx on his way up to face Dan in Grand Finals. And Dan is actually playing Sheik. I believe he played Sheik early on in bracket today, but actually played ZSS to make his way into Grand. So he's now playing Sheik again here in the final set of the tournament. playing a, a very quick in and out game right now. Sneaks a couple hits in, dashes back, and resets neutral. Let's neutral reset, actually. Since he does play the faster character, he can afford to kind of dash out of Robin's space and not take a lot of damage uh, just solely for her movement speed. But Rubik's actually doing a very good job of uh, denying Dan his space, uh, both projectiles and 11 aerials. Oh, that Nair may cost him. Nope, good delay, good stall off stage. Club Dan with the parries, looking for that uh, the aerial needles there, possibly to confirm in a bouncing fish and kill Rubik here pretty early, but didn't quite get what he was looking for. Oh, okay. The drop off ledge, uh, avoiding the hitbox of Vanish since his ledge invincibility had run out. And then he caught his home and punished Dan for it. That's quite an interesting option on Rubik's part. Uh, he's been playing pretty hot here today. And, uh, some people have said that Clever Dan has been a little sluggish or a little slow, possibly a little off today. So if there was a day that this upset could happen, it would be today. Looking for the falling up there, back air confirmed there, but Dan just shielding it, avoiding here on the shield. Ooh, actually dropping shield. I think he meant to roll, but he dropped shield there on the arc fire. Uh, took a punish. <laughs> and the the Levin sword running out actually saved Rubik from uh, from Dan's dare there. Alright, here he goes with the loops. Oh, he was looking for the uh, the F tilt drag down up air, not quite getting what he was uh, looking for. The little bit of a miss execution there from Dan. Does get the F tilt up air, double up air. And the bouncing fish kind of catching Rubik sleeping there on platform. The burst grenade is going to take stock number two, and here's Dan with the stock lead. The parry on the Arc Thunder, wow. Not that you really get anything for that. Uh, Arc Thunder <laughs> is plus. So pairing it doesn't really do you any good. It's just a flashy tactic, I suppose. Looking for fair and a bouncing fish, not gonna quite get it. That vanish hitbox is gonna knock Rubik to center stage and let Dan get the ledge for free. Rubik going off for the edge guard. Ooh, just missing that dare. I think his 11 sword actually ran out, so it wouldn't have even killed Dan if he had landed it. A lot of patience from Dan at the ledge there, but Rubik's in there managing to poke. Take Dan's second stock, and here we are in a last stock situation on game one. Looking for those F-tilt drag downs right now. Um, Rubik's a perfect percent for that, and now that he's at the 80%, he's really going to have to... Oh, I think maybe he two-framed and thought he had a jump, or he ran out of L, and I'm not sure which I wasn't paying enough attention, but... That is going to be game one for Clever Dan. Uh, 
All right, stage situation looks like it's going to be Smashville here on game two. Kind of sucks to, uh, to see Rubik basically take his own stock there on that last stock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he got gimped. It wasn't really... Uh, I think he uh, thought he had a jump, and he didn't. That's what it looked like. But Dan starting in really aggressive here. Knows that Robin doesn't start the game with uh, Levin Sword, so he can actually afford to take early exchanges and take an early damage lead against Robin up until she has her setup stuff ready. Getting forward throw and a bouncing fish. Rubik looking for aggressive options here at ledge. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Dan wasn't ready, but he definitely wasn't ready for that. Rubik actually managing to almost tie this game up here just with that uh, Nosferatu there catching Dan shielding at ledge. The burst grenade? Nope, not going to fall quite far enough. Oh, that tome almost actually get Dan. Um, Rubik instead is going to pay the price and not be able to make it back to stage. Dan's got a very big lead here. Again, uh, dropping shield on the... Uh, Arc fire. Not really sure quite why. If he's meaning trying to tilt his shield or roll out or something, and he's just mix miss executing. But he is getting hit by that arc fire, and for a character as light as Sheik, it's actually pretty damaging. He could really die very early to an arc fire up air or an arc fire up smash on Robin's behalf. Jumping over, getting the back air. And he baits the jump actually with the burst grenade. Goes for the trump, but not quite getting the perfect timing there. Ruby gonna charge down smash, and Dan's gonna make him pay with a fair bouncing fish there. The Sheik buffs are uh, really showing in some situations. The cluster grenade specifically was a pretty big one in the fact that you can't actually clank with the explosion of the cluster grenade anymore. Um, so that move actually has a lot more viability now that you can't just throw out a hitbox and snuff the explosion into it. And looking for the bouncing fish, very uh, ZSS reminiscent. Um, the same way that he would use flip kick to actually put himself off stage, he's doing the same thing with bouncing fish. Uh, however, Sheik's kill power off stage is significantly less than Zero Suit Samus would be. But he is uh, sticking to this challenge that he and Rubik have going. Of Dan playing Sheik doesn't get the up smash he's looking for. Rubik opting for a down throw, sending Dan straight up. Both players are pretty high percent right here. Have to uh, question Rubik's spacing there, throwing the Thor on full stage when Dan was already in shield. Uh, maybe he was cleansing the Thunder Palette, but really, uh, that would have been could have been his easy kill option. Now it's on Clever Dan here to find Rubik's second stock now that he's at almost 130 percent. Sneaks in the back air. Beautiful tech. Can he get this edge guard? Oh, and he was out of Elwind anyway, so had uh, had that back air not actually killed, uh, I don't think Rubik could have made it back anyhow. Oh, that was that's so sick. That aerial needle drag down up there. It's it's such a sick little continuation actually. Dan really looking to just run out this Elwind and take Rubik stock without any contest whatsoever. That arc fire up there, like I said, is quite damaging for a character as light as she will kill very early. And being very smart about his tech chases here, actually. He's really uh, punishing Rubik for his tech options so far. Whether it be Miss Tech, Tech in Place, or Tech Roll, uh, Dan has a, an answer so far. Kind of reading him almost a little bit, or at least reading the tech option. Oh, but Rubik is going to dash back, pivot F smash, punish Dan for dashing in there. Dan does have a 76% lead. He's got to be very careful here uh, that he doesn't mess up and somehow put himself in a situation that he can't recover from where Rubik can rack up a lot of damage uh, or possibly even gimp Dan. Going for the gym jab there, force the tech situation. Dan's got a very large percent lead. Oh! And the Vanish hitbox, uh, that Vanish bot, uh, buff actually going to come into play there. Uh, forcing an unteckable, and that is game two for Clubber Dan here in Grand Finals. This could be a pretty dominant 3-0. Uh, interesting playing Dan play so, seeing Dan play so well with this Sheik. I don't know, man. I think, I think the backdoor 3-0 is coming. It could. Uh, you never know. I will never count Matty out. He's very good at <laughs> I'm not counting him out. <laughs> I won't count him out. Uh, he's very good at, at remain, keeping his composure. Um, I've seen plenty of reverse 3-0s uh, come out of Rubik here. 
Uh, he and Robin are definitely a, a duo. Uh -huh. He and Robin are uh, definitely quite the duo. Uh, he plays her very well and knows what he's doing. Dan actually going to switch to the DK possibly? He does. He's playing DK on Game 3 and Grand Finals. How BM? <laughs> Alright, now that Dan has switched to a uh, much slower pure grappler. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Alright. Oh, this. Oh, it was dumb. <gasps> the armor on the DK punch. Oh, looking for the back air. He really wants his edge guard here early. Uh, Dan switching from a very quick uh, rush down put character to a uh, much slower heavy grappler is going to be interesting to see how he still deals with the character who does so well against heavies is Robin. Arcfire really comes into play. It's quite easy to poke. And uh, her Arcfire ladders work so well against the big body characters anyhow. We're a bit mixing it up with the B reverses. I think he uh, actually boost grabbed. Boost grab Dan out of a landing there. Oh, Dan extending his hurt box with the fair. Rubik ready for it. Doesn't quite kill, though. Good DI coming out from Dan, combined with DK being a very heavy character. Rubik is holding Thoron, so he may be yep. oh, looking for the landing. Doesn't quite get the timing he's looking for. Now this is scary. DK with rage. That up air will take it at 100. Oh, he went to... He, he went to punch him uh, and use the punch armor, but the arc fire actually beat the punch armor and we'll make Dan pay for that interaction there. Now I was going to say, it's interesting to see, I was literally just about to say that I haven't seen Dan dash attack as much into the Rar Bear uh, because that is his favorite quick little combo train. Oh my goodness, and <laughs> missing the tech and Dan's laughing. He's stage fucked him at 60 and he's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's actually went to the, the turnaround down B there because uh, since the DK boss a couple of patches ago, he does have confirms off of that move now. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's playing big bodies uh, against Robin, whose jab actually has such a good hitbox. Uh, that jab will hit backwards, it'll hit high, it'll hit low, it kind of does quite a bit. But there you go, the arc fire and the up smash killing around 130. Uh, now Dan with a 35% lead, really looking to use these back airs here. These large disjoints, but the tome coming in and saving Rubik from the jump in there after the arc fire. Gets a rapid jab, and just like that, Dan has actually lost a lead. Went for the down tilt in the grab, not quite getting there. Ooh. Rubik delaying the uh, up air, or the fair, maybe it was just a little bit too long, and Dan was actually able to air dodge out of danger. Oh no, and the SD on Rubik's part, and that is 3 0 in grand finals for Clubber Dan.